Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. So we do have the cube root of square root of 5 plus 2 and we're going to simplify this. And I'm going to be presenting two different methods here. I'll show you two different ways to simplify this. First method. Okay, so we're going to be taking advantage of the conjugates. So I'm going to go ahead and write the following expression, the cube root of square root of 5 plus 2 plus the cube root of square root of 5 minus 2. Now, why am I doing this? Because this is going to give me what I need and it's kind of going to be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to call this expression x because I don't know what it is. I don't even know the first part, right? So, and then I'm going to go ahead and cube both sides and that should be kind of straightforward, right? And when I'm cubing, I'm, I'd like to use a special way of cubing it. Like if you are cubing a plus b, you know, there is different ways to write that. And I'm just going to be writing it in this format, a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by the quantity a plus b. Okay. And in this case, a plus b is going to be my x, obviously. Okay. And this is a and this is b. All right. So when we cube the first one, obviously we're going to get rid of the cubic root. And so it's going to look like this. Plus b cubed is going to be square root of 5 minus 2 plus 3ab. So here's the important part. When you multiply, when you multiply cube root of square root of 5 plus 2 and cube root of square root of 5 minus 2, obviously from difference of two squares, you can multiply the insides and you're going to be getting 5 minus 4, which is 1. Awesome. That's why we're doing this. So it's going to be 3 times 1. And I don't need to write it. A plus B is basically the X. So we're just going to write it as cube root of whatever. Or you can just write X. Okay, because A plus B is equal to X. Nice. But what is this equal to? Remember that it's equal to X cubed. Beautiful. Now the 2 cancels out. And we get an equation like this. X cubed is equal to, or we can write it like this. X cubed minus 3X minus 2 root 5 is equal to 0. Okay, again. I'll spare you the trouble and I'm just going to give you the solutions and I don't want to keep this video too long. That's one of the reasons why. Basically, one of the solutions of this equation is going to be x equals root 5. And something to remember, the other solutions are going to be complex, so we don't care about them. Okay? Now, what, what does it mean when uh, this is equal to square root of 5, right? Okay. There's another important fact that if you remember, when we multiply these two expressions, we got 1, right? So, if you call this expression which is what we're trying to find, right? If you call this expression u, then the other expression with the minus sign is just going to be its reciprocal. Why? Because they, they are, their product is 1. So when you multiply two things and their product is 1, uh, they're called reciprocals, right? So this is supposed to be 1 over u. But guess what? I do know that they add up to x, which is square root of 5. So we, we get the following equation from here. u plus 1 over u, which is what I started with here, right here, is equal to x, but x is equal to root 5. So this is equal to root 5. Isn't that interesting? Okay, cool. Now, I, I, I'm i trying to find u, but I have u plus 1 over u. So this becomes a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So I get u squared plus 1 is equal to square root of 5u. Multiply both sides by root 5. And then if you arrange it, you're going to get u squared minus square root of 5u plus 1 is equal to 0. Again, without further ado, if you use the quadratic formula here, you're going to be getting basically two solutions, right? And those solutions are going to be, u is going to be either root 5 plus 1 over 2 or root 5 minus 1 over 2. Now, which one do we pick? They're both positive, right? And we're looking for a positive answer. And remember, u is the cube root of, cube root of square root of 5 plus 1, right? Okay. I mean 2. Okay. You know what I mean. Okay, so... Which one is the right candidate, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do here. We're going to do a little bit of manipulation with radicals, okay? Ready, set, go. Okay, so the square root of 5, obviously, is between 2 and 3, right? So if you subtract 1 and divide by 2, you're going to notice that square root of 5 minus 1 divided by 2 is between 1 half and 1. On the other hand, we're claiming that uh, this is equal to the cube root of square root of 5 plus 2, so look at square root of 5 plus 2. Well, because of this, we can safely say that um, if you add 2 to both sides, square root of 5 plus 2 is between 4 and 5. And uh, what is that supposed to mean? Well, 4 is greater than 1 and 5 is less than 8. 
So square root of five plus two is basically between one and eight. If you cube root both sides, you get the cube root of square root of five plus two, you're gonna find it between one and two. So this is impossible then. Our, the number we're looking for must be greater than one, but less than two. Therefore, we need to go with this one. Cool. So what is that supposed to mean? It means that the cube root of square root of five plus two is equal to square root of five plus one divided by two, which brings us to the end of the first solution method. Okay, here we go. Now here's the second solution method. Okay, how do we solve this using a different way, right? Okay, now this second method is gonna be another interesting method. And you can compare and contrast like at the end, uh, please comment which method you like better uh, and why. Okay, so second method basically involves the following. We're gonna find it in a more direct way, sort of, okay. So since this is like a radical expression with square root of five in it, it's cube root must be something like that too, you know? So I'm gonna assume that the answer is in this format, a root five plus b, where a and b are rational numbers. Of course, they have to be rational, right? In order for this to work. Okay, cool. The next step is going to be, I think you've seen that already. The next step is gonna be cubing both sides, obviously. When you cube both sides, from here, you're gonna get square root of five plus two, if you cube it. And the right-hand side, if you cube the right-hand side, again, let's use our formula. Let's cube the first number. What's, what's the cube of that number? Well, it's gonna be a cubed, but we're also gonna be getting five root five. So five root five a cubed, plus b cubed, right? Plus three ab, remember the formula? Three ab root five, and then you're gonna multiply it by the original expression, which is a root five plus b. Okay, something like that. Now we're going to go ahead and arrange these terms. How do we arrange them? Let's just go ahead and distribute. So we should be getting something like five root, or maybe I can write it like this, five a cubed times root five plus b cubed. And then when you multiply these two things, you should be getting a squared b, but also three, three a squared b, and then there's a five in it. So it's gonna be 15 a squared b, right? because three times five. And when you multiply these two, you should be getting three a squared b, three a, I'm sorry, three a b squared root five. Okay, now how do we distinguish between the terms here? Well, we're gonna put together the terms that have radicals in them. So it's gonna look like this, basically. Or you can safely say that these two, b cubed plus 15 a squared b, is just gonna be constant term without the radical. So it's gonna be the rational part, which means this is equal to two, basically, right? And the other part, this one and this one, because they are the coefficients of root five, when we put these together, it's gonna to look like five a cubed plus three a b squared, and that needs to equal one. Why? Because basically what I'm trying to do is, I'm writing this, this number as two plus one root five, right? And then I'm comparing it to b plus a root 5, right? Make sense? Okay, so something like that. Oh, well, it's not exactly a, I'm not saying b is 2 and a is 1 because we're going to find those values still from here, but that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, comparing the coefficients uh, with each other, okay? Or if, if you want to make it more clear, let's do it this way. I think I shouldn't skip a step here. So here's what I'm trying to do. Let me cl clarify that a little bit. So what I'm trying to do from the expression from above is basically I put the root five together. So from here, I get this, right? And this is equal to what? what? Two plus one root five, correct? So this means that, this means that this is supposed to be two and this is supposed to be one. That's what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? Okay, so I get my system of equations. How am I gonna solve it? It's a cubic system, but it's a nice system. Remember one of those problems, something similar to this, we've done before in another video. If I can find that, I'll link it in the description as well. But here's the idea. Uh, in this case, since it's homogeneous, I, I think that's what it's called, I'm gonna assume that B is in the form Ka. So B is a multiple of A, in other words. And if you do that, you get the following. You're, you're just gonna substitute that, right? And this should, this should give you something like that. 15 k a cubed plus k cubed a cubed is equal to two. And then from the second one, you should be getting five a cubed plus three k squared a cubed is equal to one. 
Awesome. Well, where does this take us? Well, notice that uh, we have the a cubed as a common factor. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the a cubed and that should give me 15 K plus K cubed. Okay. Is equal to two. And then the bottom one is going to give me a cubed times the quantity five plus three K squared. And that's equal to one. Now, what do you do here? You divide the expression side by side. And when you divide, a cubed is going to cancel out. They're going to get a ratio of two. Therefore, we should be getting something like this. 15K plus K cubed divided by 5 plus 3K squared is equal to 2. If you go ahead and cross multiply, you should be getting K cubed plus 15K is equal to 6K squared plus 10. And if you put everything on the same side, but let me tell, say something before you did you do put everything on the same side. Because notice that the sum of the coefficients are the same on both sides. Have you noticed that? In other words, if you replace k with one, this works. Awesome, nice, you should always check for that. So k equals one is a solution. And let me tell you, the other solutions are also complex. Okay, so you don't wanna get into that. What is this supposed to mean? It means that k is equal to one, but remember, my assumption was that b is equal to ka. Well, if k is equal to one, this means that b is equal to a. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, what is that supposed to mean though? Well, if A and B are equal, basically what you can do is in one of these equations, right? You can just go ahead, for example, you can take this one, right? B cubed plus whatever. Let's go ahead and copy that here. B cubed plus 15 A squared B is equal to two. And we're saying that B is equal to A. So if you replace B with A, you get A cubed plus 15 A cubed is equal to two. And that gives you 16 a cubed is equal to two, which means a cubed is equal to one eighth, which means a is equal to one half. But since b is equal to a, b is also one half. And remember our assumption was that our expression, which is the cube root of square root of five plus two was in the form a root five plus b, right? Therefore, our expression is gonna look like one half of root five plus one half which can be written as root five plus one over two, which brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.